December is an opportunity. December is what I am calling the turning point. We could also call it the unification point. And December is a massive, massive opportunity for each of us individually and then also collectively to decide what is it that we really want? What kind of life do you want to wake up in? What kind of world do you want to live in? What sort of experiences do you want to be the predominant experience or the predominant quality or essence of your life? What do you want? This was a question that started to come in at the beginning of the year, actually. I was recently reminded of this, that the one question that was bringing through my head over and over and over, and the question that spirit and my guides and self were just hammering home, was what do you want? Not what do you think you can have, not what is possible, not what are you worthy of, not, one of, not what is spiritually correct or what good girls or good boys or good Americans or good Christians or good whatever label you're using to restrict yourself. Not, not a performance, not what do I want so other people can see me having it. No, what do you want in your gut, in your bones? What is dying to be expressed? What is desperate for acknowledgement and for recognition and for you to play with it and dance with it and figure out how to express it and to share it and be the vessel for it? What do you want? And that was a question that we've been sitting with for... 12 months or so now. I'm going to take you back just a couple of months ago, back to September, when I was talking about the ocean of self that had really begun to move in at the beginning of August and then September and October and November were this continuation of this integration and this embodiment of it. Remember, integration is like the sponge soaking up the liquid. Integration is the device receiving the new software update. Embodiment is now the process of, oh, this is what it feels like to run on this new operating system for the sponge. Oh, this is what it feels like to be fully hydrated. And now I have all this water. I have all this juice. I have all this new information. What am I going to do with it? And this month's Ascension Report is really about understanding how much of an opportunity each of us has at this moment. And I don't care if you've been on the spiritual path for 40 years or whether you just woke up this morning. These moments, these intersection points offer an opportunity for everybody to level up. A rising tide raises all boats. So whether you're just starting out and embarking on this life or whether it's old news for you and you feel like, yeah, I got a lot of notches on my bedpost. It doesn't matter because it's all relative to where you are now, the work that you have done, and how willing you are to go beyond. How willing are you to jump across the canyon? How willing are you to build the bridge across the canyon? How willing are you to fly, to crawl, to leap across the canyon? However you get there, the point is, is that for December, it's time to choose. It's time to decide. It's time to move forward. If you were standing, let's say you were standing at the Grand Canyon and you see that other side across the canyon and you really want to get there and you think, I want to get there. I'm called to get there. I know I have to get there somehow. I will get there somehow. There's one thing that you have to do above all others at some point to build a bridge across the canyon and that is to move forward. At some point, you have to be willing to take the step, to lay the next board, to lay the next stone, to erect the next support. Whatever it is that you want, whether it's a thing, whether it's an experience, or whether it's just a way of being, whatever it is, and I don't care if it's I want something to come into my life or I want something to be released from my life. I don't care if it's I want more of this or less of that or none of this or all of that. Whatever it is, at some point, you have to be willing to decide that this is my life. This is what I have chosen for myself. So this is a unification point. And that self that began to descend in September has created some really, really funky stuff for many of us. Many of us have had this sense of like, well, where is my guide? Where is my 
you know, the sense? Where is the nudge that guides me forward? Where is the North Star that I can always follow? It's the sense of, I don't know where my connection is, or I don't know where my guidance is, or I don't know, you know, what to do next, feeling really lost. Part of that is because your guidance is no longer out there. Technically, it never was. But if we're thinking, think of a building and think of like, you know, the first floor through the 12th floor and the penthouse is at the very, very top and we have the basement. You and yourselves, your higher self, your guides, your angels, your helpers, whatever you call them, you are all living in the same building. It's just that December and the past couple of months have been the months where everybody's moving in. So now you're all kind of roommates living in the same flat. And it's not the same experience that it used to be to like call them up. Oh, I need to call you or FaceTime you or run upstairs to get, you know, information from you. Now you're my roommate. And I just go, hey, what's up? What are we doing today? So part of it is that your sense of your guidance or your guides or your higher self is probably not in the same place that it used to be. That connection point most likely has changed. And I'm seeing this in my client work, especially with practitioners that I'm working with that are saying, I don't know what to do in my practice anymore. Everything has changed and I don't know how to step forward. I think the first thing you could do is begin to scan for where are you connecting now? When you take that moment and you close your eyes and you take a breath and you drop in, are you dropping into the same space? So part of what we went through was just a reorientation of how and where we connect energetically with our expanded selves. Another thing that most likely was happening, at least for many people it was happening, was this sense of finality, like something is done. I can't go there anymore. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to be that version of myself anymore. I don't want to experience this anymore. And so for many people, the past couple of months have been a really, really big leap of faith and to realize that I just can't do that anymore. I don't know what is next necessarily, but I can't do it like that anymore. I can't go to that old space. I can't hold those same beliefs. I can't say those same things. I can't hang out with the same people. And so the past few months have been really disorienting because so many of the old touchstones of our identity, of our patterns, of our physical life, which is our job, where we live, who we live with, who we're in relationship with, so much of that changed. And so many of us are standing on this new playing field going, I don't know how to play this game. I don't even know what game we're playing. And that is a good thing. I will say to you, if you feel confused, if you feel lost, if you feel uncertain, congratulations. You have crossed the threshold into this new layer of your experience, into this new reality. And the reason that it feels so often confusing, and I've been talking about this for the past couple of months, is the answers are not found in the intellect. The answers are found in the deeper layers of self, in the more expanded layers of self, these layers of self that have a point of view that does not begin and end at your human boundaries. There are parts of you that existed before you came into this human experience that are still currently existing through this experience and that will continue on after this human experience dies. There are parts of you that are invested in this human experience, but see beyond this human experience and are not bound by the limitations of your human experience. And in a sense, this is who is calling the shots. In many ways, we've just moved into a neighborhood that we're not really familiar with. And the roommates that we have have lived here for a long time and like, oh yeah, the park is over there. The coffee shop is over there. There's a really great restaurant up the street. So you're not getting your information in the same way. The information is also guiding you in new directions. And I know that this feels really scary, but the truth is, is that it's not because that's how human beings grow and evolve by learning new things. You weren't born knowing how to tie your shoes. You weren't born knowing how to drive a car. You weren't born knowing how to cook yourself a meal or boil an egg or whatever. You weren't born with specific beliefs of who was good and who was bad, who was dangerous and who you want to hang out with. You weren't born knowing who to love or who to hate or who to be afraid of. You just were. So anything that a human is doing, especially regularly out of habit and routine, are things that were learned. So December offers a beautiful opportunity to take your ignorance and your lack of understanding and turn that into the fuel for discovery of this embodiment process, this 
turning point, this reunification point? There's some questions that I want to ask you. Because we're at a point where really it's simply about doing. The time for sitting and thinking about it is over. The time for sitting and healing around it is over. Yes, there no doubt there will be more moments on the path where you do need to stop and take a moment and take a break and work with something and release something and feel something. But in terms of like, oh, I'm in a healing phase or oh, I'm in a brainstorming or a thinking phase, this is what's coming to an end. It is time for action. It is time for action. And so here are some questions for you for, for December. At what moment? And these are not rhetorical. These may sound a bit like platitudes, these questions. These may sound like a question that you've heard a million times before. Oh, by the way, on the 21st of this month, I'm having a gathering. I think it's the Thursday, whatever the date of the, the day of the 21st is. It's going to be a gathering around the solstice energies. And we're going to be playing with these themes of the turning point, of the unification point, and of finally actively deciding that this is the life that you want to experience. So be sure to sign up for that. There's only going to be 25 spots available. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, my first book is coming out on December 12th, Tuesday the 12th. It's 12-12. It's also a new moon. And I am really excited about that. It's called Notes from the Higher Self. And I'm going to reference that and the rest of what we're going to be talking about today. But there's some questions that are important for you to live this month and really try on and really engage actively because this is the month where everything can change. And here's the question, one of them, at what moment do you decide that it's your life to live? I mean that. Where are you still giving your time, your energy, your awareness, your focus, your love, your attention, your dedication, your devotion, your discipline to things that you just don't care about or that you don't want to do or that you are miserable doing and that you're unhappy, that you know it's just time to go. It's time to go. It's time for this to be done. It's your life. It's your life. And I don't care what anybody's circumstances are. I understand that certain people have access to certain things more readily in this world. I'm not an idiot. I understand the layers of privilege and the layers of access or gatekeeping or exclusion that exist in this world. It's very real. But we all have access to choosing. It doesn't cost us anything. We all have access to deciding I want something different. I want something else. And here's another thing interesting about gratitude that I just want to throw in there. Wanting something else doesn't mean that you're not grateful. You can have an amazing meal. You can have the best meal of your life and know that you're going to get hungry again. Me being hungry for more doesn't mean I'm not grateful for what I've had and what I have. So this idea that, oh, I should just be quiet and just take what I have and just be, you know, okay, I'm just going to be a good boy and I'm going to say thank you and I'm going to be grateful. That is such an imperialist, like colon, colonial mindset of, you know, I was given something by this great ruler in the sky or in the throne or in the castle, whatever layer of ruler it is that you're responding to. And to say, well, I just have to take what I was given. I just have to be grateful because look. This is what I have and I just have to be okay with it. Certainly there's something to be said for making the most of what you have. Certainly being able to find gratitude regardless of your circumstances is a powerful act. And the idea that you just have to take what you have and be grateful and suck it up. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You can have what you want, but at some point you have to decide that it's your life and you are the one responsible for it. And you are going to start living it with more intention, with more deliberate, with more deliberate action, and with more conscious choice. Here's another question for you this month. At what point are you going to decide, actually, at what point are you going to remember that you are the head writer of the script that you are currently living? And if you don't like the story... As the head writer, you have the authority as the author, the authority is yours to write a new story, to write a new script, to say, I don't really think that I believe that anymore. Or this way that I've been navigating the world for all of these years, decades, however long, 
hasn't brought me where I want. I don't feel fulfilled or satisfied. There's got to be another way. At what point do you start asking these questions? Because not only are these real actual questions that you can choose to live and find answers for, they're also the way that we begin really reactivating and really reforming and reshaping our world through our conscious ability to create, through our creatorship and our master, master creatorship abilities. You can start now. It's a choice. Everyone has access to the choice of how we are going to live. The story that we tell about ourselves. That is something that is always within your control and within your power. When you claim liberation for yourself and you start living as one who is liberated, you become a source of liberation. When you create something and you manifest the experience within yourself and you say, I am no longer going to see myself as unworthy, then you become a beacon of worthiness. When you are able to finally remind yourself that you are worthy and to figure out how to reconnect with your own sense of worthiness and release and collapse those old programs of unworthiness, and everyone can do that work. Once you learn how to do that, and you embody worthiness, then you become a beacon of worthiness and your mere presence gives other people permission, unconsciously, energetically, subconsciously, they may not be having a conscious awareness of it, but your presence then gives them permission to begin to liberate themselves, to begin to remember and, and reclaim their worthiness. So this isn't just have a better life so that you can feel better and be better, that's part of it, but the clarity of your lived example is something that I will never stop harping on because it is one of the most powerful things that you have access to. And my work, the one thing that it does over and over and over, time and time again, is point you back to yourself. You are a powerful creator. And at first, it can be often really daunting to accept that you are the creator of your experience and that you have created the reality that you're currently living in. And for many people, the first response to that thought and to that truth is to reject it and is to point to all of the other reasons why you are where you are. And certainly those things, those things play a role. But the truth of the fact that you are, okay, these weird gestures, I don't know how to control them. <laughs> but I loved that, that, um, that sparkly fireworks at the, just the right time. So I'm going to um, trust whatever powers are creating these gestures. Thank you. Am I going to get the thumbs up? Yep, there we go. <laughs> the point is, is that once you accept that you are the creator, that gives you your power back. There's one door to the prison and it swings both ways. The same door that takes you into the prison is the same door that takes you out of the prison. And that door exists up here. So to decide that you are done with something, to decide that you are going to create a version of reality for yourself, to decide that you are going to allow the fullness of yourself, your higher self, your guides, your helpers, your angels, to participate consciously and actively in your life is a choice. And December is the month where you can really begin to unify and create a turning point for yourself because it's here. And what do you want? And what are you currently doing to either create that or what are you currently doing, perhaps unconsciously, that is actually keeping what you want out of your reality and out of your experience? And it all lies in your hands. It's all up to you. My first book is coming out on December 12th. I have known for pretty much my whole life that I would be an author at some point. And I've always known that writing would be a huge part of not only just my life, but my livelihood. 
And for the past 10 years that I've been doing this, doing this work and have had this practice, which by the way, my mentorship program has opened again. Um, and I do have four spots available for the deeper dive. If you want to unleash yourself, if you want to reclaim that power and authority and reset your butt squarely in the seat of the sovereign, that's what this work can do. There's a 30, mon a 30 minute intake call that's free. We can have some time to talk about it. Um, but the link is in the description to sign up for that if you're interested in some deeper work. And my work always takes you back to the truth that you are the one who is creating this. You are the one who has had a hand in everything that you've experienced in some way on some level. And that realization and the acceptance of that is liberating. And it is often first terrifying. And the book is a perfect example of that. The past 10 years, I have known, okay, I'm going to write a book. This practice is leading me to a book. I'm going to be an author someday. I'd always known I was going to be an author, but I didn't know under what context. And when I stepped into this practice and started to build this business, it became very clear to me like, oh, okay, this is where one of the books is going to come from. Very clearly around the beginning of October, the end of September, I was getting the message that in order to be an author, at some point, you're going to have to write a book. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that reminder, self. Thanks for that reminder, spirit. I give you a heart for that one. Is it going to do the heart thing? Yeah, I love the hearts. Um, so, and that was very clear. It was just a message that just plunk kind of landed in my lap. The next day, I began writing this book. Now, I will grant you that this book and the content in it is stuff that I have previously published. So it wasn't like I wrote the book in two months, but from the beginning of October to the published date is just about two months. I went from knowing in some way on some level at some point that I would write a book to being an author and having a book ready to go in just two months. My point here is that, number one, it's never going to happen in the way that you think it's going to happen. Whatever it is, you have to remain really, really open to how it's going to occur in your life, the experience um, and the circumstances that are going to bring this reality to you. And number two, it's going to happen probably a lot faster than the mind would, would let you believe because the mind has no frame of reference for this. The mind doesn't know how to do this. Anything that is new, again, like I had said, one of the powerful things about being a human is that we learn and evolve through growth, through learning, through new experiences. In fact, that's the only way that a human grows and evolves is by trying and doing something new because that creates new muscle memory and that creates new cellular memory and that creates new neural pathways. That's how we keep ourselves young and vital and vibrant is by continuing to learn and grow and expand beyond our history. So in order to do something new, you've got to learn something new. And because we are physical beings in a physical reality, the body requires an experience of it. I've got to physically do it. I've got to physically feel it. I've got to physically see it or visualize it in order for the body to record it. So this is the month. If you want to be an author, you got to write. If you want to be an artist, you got to paint or dance or sing, or sculpt, or play your instrument. If you want to be in love and meet somebody, you got to go outside and make yourself available. If you want a clean room, you got to pick up your stuff or hire, hire a housekeeper. If you want a red house and your house is currently white, you got to paint it. So December is very, very simple in the truth that whatever it is that you want, you can begin choosing it now. And sometimes the choice to begin creating it is saying, okay, this is what I'm focused on. When I am an author, what will I do? Well, I'll write regularly. If I was a painter, what would I do? Well, I would paint regularly. If I was a baker, what would I do? Well, I would know how to bake. You can begin it now. And if you don't have access to the things that you need to begin the life that you are dreaming of, for whatever reason, you can begin with the decision that you are going to start doing things differently. And you can begin by saying to spirit, self, the universe, God, the angels, whatever you call it, hey, I'm ready for a new way. I'm ready for a new life. I'm ready for this new job or this new experience or I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to go. 
And I need you to show me, open the door, show me the path, lay down a breadcrumb, open a window, whatever it is, and spirit will respond. Because as we move closer to ourself, and this is how I see it, one of two things is happening with every choice and decision that you make. You're either moving towards your truth or you're moving away from it. And oftentimes the only way that you know is by how you feel. When you are moving towards your truth, which is back to yourself, back to your authenticity, back to your liberation, back to your sovereignty and your authority, your truth returns you home. And so when you are living and creating and acting and choosing from your truth, you know it because you feel it. Oh, this feels like going home. This feels like relief. This feels like ease. This feels like an exhale. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit anxious or nervous because of what I have to do to honor this truth. But just finally saying it out loud and admitting it to myself is a liberation. That's truth. Moving away from your truth is leaving your center, denying yourself, excluding yourself from support and help and assistance. And when we're denying our truth, our helpers can't really help us because they can't help us actively deny ourselves. They can throw rocks and try to get our attention and scream from the sidelines, hey, no, we're over here. But our helpers, our assistants, our self cannot assist us actively in denying ourselves. And only you know what truth feels like. And truth is always simple. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm lonely, I'm bored, I'm over it, I'm done, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm scared, whatever. It's always simple. Now, the experience of honoring that truth and putting that truth into play may feel a little more complicated. It may feel a little more overwhelming. But what is the alternative? It's time to decide. It's time to decide. If you want to be an author, you have to write a book. If you want to be fitter, you have to change something about your exercise and your diet. If you want to be happier, you have to sit with and work with the parts of you that thrive in unhappiness and find out what it is that they're doing in service of what they think is, is safe for you. Oh, well, it's just safe for you to be unhappy. It's safe for you to be single. It's safe for you to be broke. It's safe for you to be whatever. Because this, these parts of you are only doing what they think keeps you safe. They're just doing the best that they know how to do. And it's your job to turn to them and say, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore, though. I appreciate what you've done. And I appreciate everything that you have you know, given in service of keeping me locked into this very specific way of being, but I don't want to do that anymore. So we're going to have to find a way now to work together towards what I do want. So it's important for December that you remember something that's really, really helpful when you're making change. And when you're in the moments of these turning points, these 180s, these big pivots, and you're returning back to your truth and back to yourself, there will be parts of you that have no frame of reference for this and they're going to get loud and they're going to get frustrated and they're going to be resistant because they don't know how to do that or they're afraid of that or that takes you outside of the comfort zone where they have no control. It's not the choice to create something new that creates the discomfort and the discord. It's the parts of you that don't know how to do that that create the discomfort and the discord. Do you understand the difference? It's the inner child saying, yes, let's go do that. That sounds like fun. I don't know how to do it, but I don't care. Let's do it. That's something new. That's something real. That's something pure. That's something that I actually really want. That's something that is moving me towards my truth. Yes, let's do that. And then the mind comes in. Oh, you can't do that. Then it's going to happen. That's not for people like you. Oh, that's a good idea for them, but you can't. Blah, 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 blah. That's where the pain comes from. The discord comes from the resistance. The tension and the pain come from the lie that you can't do that or you're not capable or you're not worthy. So it's not the choice to create a new life or a better way or a happier way or a simpler way for yourself that needs your time and attention. That is the non-negotiable. It's the part of you that's muddying the waters in the hopes that you'll just get tired or bored or get distracted and forget about it because this part of you doesn't know how to do it. That's what needs your love and attention. That's when you pull it close and you say, hey baby, tell me what it is that's got you so upset. I'm making these changes and these new choices and this seems to be really stirring up the pot for you. So tell me what is, what is that about and it's going to tell you what it's about and you're going to lovingly reaffirm to it 
I understand why you are so uncomfortable. I understand why you're afraid or angry. We're still doing the thing, but I understand and I'm willing to listen to you as long as it takes for you to really realize and accept that this is the direction that we're heading because it's your life and only you can decide when it's time to live it. It's your truth and only you can decide when it's time to express it. The matrix is not going to give you permission to break free. At some point, you're just going to have to decide that it's time. At some point, you're going to have to be willing to stand up to yourself and say, babe, I know we've been doing it this way for this many years for X amount of time, but this just, it can't happen anymore. It can't go on anymore. And then you begin. And December is a turning point. How do you want to live? What world do you want to wake up in? What do you want the primary fundamental experience of your minutes, your hours, your days, and your weeks to be? And it might mean that you have to walk away. It might mean, in fact, I'm almost positive that it will mean you have to walk away from something. But that's the deal. If you want to create something new, you have to create something new. We can't do it when we're locked in the little small container of our history and our identity and letting the world out here tell us who we are. At some point, we have to say, you know what? Those are nice ideas, but that's not what I believe. That's not what I want, and that's not what I choose. So it's your life. It's your life. And it's time for you to live it. December 21st, Solstice Gathering. My book comes out on the 12th. Buy it. It's going to be available on Amazon called Notes from the Higher Self. And I am available for private sessions. We can do one hour. We can do three sessions, six sessions, 12 sessions. I have lots of choices. But if you're ready, then I'm here for you. As always, if you feel this work has been of value, consider making a donation. All the links are in the description below. Have a fabulous month. Talk to you soon.